Hi there, Wayne Jennings here. Today, we're looking at video lighting. Now, when you're out camping and the sun begins to set, it doesn't mean you gotta put away your video camera because thankfully, there are all kinds of small, lightweight, low-cost options available to help illuminate your scene. Stick around, I'll show you some of the equipment I use and how I use it. Most of the lights I'm going to show you today uh, employ the LED technology. That stands for light emitting diode, and as the name would suggest, they're little diodes that emit light. This is my most powerful light that I use. It has 144 of these LEDs arranged on this panel. So that gives a lot of light. This will illuminate your whole campsite. It's very powerful. Uh, I don't tend to take this on a lot of camping trips just because of the size and bulk. Uh, I definitely don't take it on a backpacking trip. It just It's just too big to put in my pack. But it's great if I'm covering a 24-hour endurance race where I'm up all night and I'm uh, videotaping racers as they come and go at checkpoints. This is a great light to have. Um, it has a replaceable battery on the back, which is great. You can switch it out as needed. It also has... Uh, a variable dimmer on there so you can crank it up or lower the output depending on how close you are to your subject so you don't blind them. It also has these little magnetic points on the corner so you can attach filters to the front. So it's a very uh, useful, more of a professional light, but I don't tend to take this one camping just because of its size and weight. There are some smaller lights that I prefer to take. These are, um, I've been using these for years. These are great. They're made by a company called SEMA, and uh, not as powerful as that first light. Each unit has 36 of these LEDs, so it's not going to be as bright. And they don't have a dimmer, they're just uh, on and off, but they, they throw a fair amount of light. The nice thing about these is you can uh, click them together. So that'll double your output, or if you're using a wide-angle lens, it'll cover more of an angle. I actually have three of them here, so you can make it really wide. Now you notice this one, uh, it looks a little different. All I've done there, I got an old uh, shopping bag, a white shopping bag, and I just taped it onto the back. And the only reason I did that, it just kind of diffuses the light a bit. So if you're shooting real close-ups, or you're really close to someone's face, you don't want to blind them, that just helps to diffuse the light a little bit. And these units are nice. The, the batteries last a long time. They have built-in rechargeable batteries, but this company also makes this exact same unit with replaceable AA batteries, so that's something to consider. But these, like they weigh like four ounces, so you can throw one or two of these in your backpack. They don't take up much room at all. Uh, another one that I really like uh, for many reasons, this weighs a bit more, it's like five ounces, but it's waterproof. And uh, it has a replaceable battery, uh, rechargeable battery, so you can carry an extra. It's the same style of battery uh, that you'd find in like a GoPro camera. But these uses a different kind of LED technology. There's only three of them in there, but they're very powerful. And you can turn them on in different combinations. So there's uh, the real bright one. There's kind of a diffused wide angle, uh, a narrow beam, wide beam. Um, it's very powerful light, but because it's waterproof, it's great for canoeing, kayaking. You can take it snorkeling. Um, and it's, uh, you can attach it in different ways. It comes with this little clip here which basically attaches to uh, a hot shoe on a camera. It just slides on there. And so now you've got it mounted to a camera. But you can also, uh, a lot of these lights, by the way, they have a quarter inch socket on the bottom. So you could take a small little tripod like this and just thread it on like so. And uh, then you've got your light on a little stand which is great if you you, know, you need to set up a shot where you don't want it on the camera, you maybe want the light off to the side. A lot of these lights actually have that built into the bottom, so that's a little feature to look for also. Well, the other nice thing about this little light, let's take it off this uh, tripod. Uh, if I take this little hot shoe off, which I can't, it's a cold shoe, it's not a hot shoe. So you'll see now it's got this little mount on the bottom, which is the same you would find on uh, a GoPro or an action camera. And what that allows you to do, it comes with this little bracket, which allows you to attach it to the bracket. And at the same time, you get your little action camera and stick it beside. Of course, you put the little bolts in there. But basically, then you would have the camera and the light attached 
So wherever you point the camera, that light is going to follow. Your action camera is waterproof, your light's waterproof, great for using rain, snow, underwater, out in the canoe. Uh, a nice combination to have. I really like this light. Uh, here's another little one that this thing weighs like two and a half ounces. It uses two AA batteries, but it's got a, it's older technology. This uses a little halogen bulb inside, but it's only three watts, which is not very bright. As you can see, it's not very bright at all, but it's mainly used just as a highlight. Um, you can't really tell under these lights, but if you're in the tent at night and you're doing a little blog, aim, you know, you're looking at the camera, this will just fill in your face at night just enough to, you know, show off the color, bring out the details that you would otherwise lose without any light at all. So it's not going to light up the whole campsite. Uh, it's not even going to light up uh, a person across the end of a picnic table, but for, uh, you know, two or three feet in front of you, that's, that's really all you need. Now keep in mind, you know, these are specialty lights designed for uh, video and um, they range in price from like 20 to $100, but any light source will help. I mean, you can use a flashlight, you can use this kind, you know, wearing your, wearing on your uh, head here. That'll certainly illuminate the scene, but the problem with these lights is they tend to have a narrow beam so they don't really give you a uh, flattering light. They kind of kind of splotchy, you know, uh, not very flattering at all, but in an emergency they will work. But there are some options. This is a little LED utility light and it's got like 24 LEDs in there. So it's going to spread the light uh, a little bit more. It's still not ideal, but I found this one. This is really nice. I bought this at a, a dollar discount store. I paid like $4 for it. And it has this flat panel LED. This is, I think they also call them Cree LEDs, but they spread the light really nice and soft. And that gives you really good coverage for a little tiny light, it's small. Uh, like I say, it, uh, it was inexpensive, it cost me like $4. Nice thing about this light, it's got a magnet on the back. So if you get creative, for instance, um, got this little action camera with this little mount here because this is magnetic and the mount is made of metal I can stick it on there so wherever I aim the camera the light is going to aim as well uh, you could probably buy or you know make something yourself out of metal that would allow you to do that so there are options out there you don't have to spend a lot of money but it makes a huge difference at night having some kind of illumination. It just brings out the color and the detail in your subject. So let's take a look now at some examples of how to use these lights in the outdoors. Come back over here and I'll have your spaghetti. Thank you. Any more noodles? The most obvious way to use a camera light is of course mounted on the camera itself. This way, wherever you point the camera, you'll be pointing your source of light as well. Now, the scene may have other sources of light. For instance, everyone in this scene is wearing a headlamp, but the on-camera light is a constant and focused source of light, and it does a good job of brightening up the foreground. But we can also get creative by selectively placing our lights in key areas. In this scene, I placed a small light inside the tent in the background. Now it's not overly bright, but it just helps define the tent against the dark tree line. Here's a brighter example of that kind of scene where the video light is placed inside the tent, but it's pointing back towards the camera and even around a bright campfire, one or two video lights can make a subtle difference. In this scene, we're just illuminated by the fire. But then I get a single video light and I hide it behind this rock pile. Now, both campers can be clearly seen, even if the flames die down a bit. Now, Here's a scene where we're sitting around a smaller campfire and you can barely see us. 
So what I've done here is I've added two video lights. They're both sitting low on the ground and pointing up towards us. And now you can see a little more detail. You can see the edge of the fire pit is lit. You can see this small bush. And of course, you can see both campers. Of course, in my final production, I would frame this scene a little tighter to eliminate the sources of the light and make it look a little more natural. Thanks for watching. I hope you found that video to be useful. For other tips and techniques, check out my YouTube channel, The One Canoe. And I'd like to ask you, if you haven't already done so, please hit that subscribe button. Thanks again.